I started painting cars from about age two or three. When we'd get back from race meeting, I'd get back and draw pictures of the cars I'd seen. It was appreciated that I was quite good at it. Although secondary school, one of my art teachers told my mum that I was nothing more than average. I attended my first race meeting at Donington, I think it was, uh, in, my, in my mother's womb, so it really is in my blood. I don't have a great memory actually for, for my childhood for whatever reason, but what I can remember from sort of age three is turning up at a race meeting at Silverstone. That was amazing. I can just remember the noise and the sounds and mud flying and just the excitement and the thrill of it. As soon as we got home, we would get on our pedal go-karts and race around the house. As we got older, my, my dad was restoring a, a car as, a, as an old Gilburn GT. And we both learnt to weld, so we ended up making our own go-karts and adapting them and like changing where the cranks were to try and create a different look of car. I did end up winning a couple of indoor karting champions, just lo local ones. And, um, we never really took it any further than that. I can still remember the smell of, of the go-karts. Like I, was, I was sort of looking at this picture and you know, I remember putting the jumper on and you get all your kind of kit, you polish up your visor. I remember we used to try and use a bit of Rain-X on the visor. Any little advantage, which I'm still kind of inspired to do with, 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 the, with the racing car now. Really exciting at the time. I was sort of drawing and painting throughout my, my childhood. As I got older, sort of eight, nine, I started doing just these local county show competitions. And then it got a bit more serious when I, I won a competition when I was 13, run by the British Racing Drivers Club. I won some money. I bought a camera with, with that money to then go and research to start painting properly. And that's kind of how, when I started selling pictures. I would try and pick out subjects, interesting cars. So I'd look around the paddock, look for particular um, angles, things like that. But specific racing cars as well that had won events and drivers and, and sort of really get into, dig into the history of it. I then got onto my A levels and I actually got a, a B for art. I didn't really get on with my teachers. They didn't appreciate me uh, drawing and painting cars all the time. Although I got a B, I actually sold most of my A level work, which is um, quite funny really. I've been massively lucky over the years to keep keep it as a job you know I've, I've been busy for a long time now you know I now have sort of 18 months to your waiting list it's funny because people people still come up to me at exhibitions and they sort of say you know you're getting by you know it feels like I'm still on my year out but I've been doing it I've been sort of doing it for 20 or 25 years now um, but I always say yeah I'm still getting away with it the best bit of the studio is this door This is the 1963 uh, TVR Grand Tourer Lightweight 1800 engine. Um, I actually have a bit of an obsession with TVRs. This is my eighth. Um, my father and brother have both had TVRs. And it's, I actually painted this car many years ago for the owner who had it in the 60s. I didn't realize it was the same car until after I purchased it. So it kind of feels like a bit, bit of uh, destiny that it's ended up in my hands again. It's, it's cheesy, but it's, it's crazy that happened. The TVR Grand Tour is, is quite interesting in terms of TVRs, because actually the steel tube chassis didn't really change until the, the, the more recent ones. And so actually it was kind of like the first evolution of all those cars. One of the reasons it was called a lightweight, because it had a lightweight uh, body, so a thinner body, but it also had a light gauge chassis, so a thinner steel. But like all 
steel tube chassis cars, unfortunately over the years, it rusted and corroded. A few years ago after a crash, they decided to replace it. But what's cool about this is you can see where they modified it and drilled it and lightened it even more um, throughout its racing history. So this car it raced throughout the 60s and 70s and at the start of the 80s, somewhere I think it went to south of France. And the chap I bought it from here at Castle Coombe actually, Phil Hooper, he found it in a barn in the south of France and then rebuilt it. And he, he raced it for some time from the early 2000s. Raced it at, in fact he raced it at Goodwood Revival, but the Le Mans Classic and throughout Europe until he sold it to me. This is one of three built by the factory and purchased from new by squadron leader Paddy Gaston. Paddy raced it from 1963 onwards and in 1964 he raced in the Goodwood Tourist Trophy under two litre race. Then went on to the Nürburgring, 1000 kilometres and Spa 500 kilometres. And that was something that was quite, something quite maverick for such a a small production manufacturer to enter against some mega machinery. Part of the excitement about owning and racing this car is tracing through the history of it and knowing sort of how, how, where they raced and who raced it. Jerry Marshall raced it in 65, some other cool names raced it. From its journey through Europe in that period, it had a few modifications, like there's, there's quite a few extra vents, so you've got the extra vents uh, above the radiator, kind of sort of GTO style, and some vents at the at the back of the bonnet and that's pretty unique for, for the Grand Shura and that was sort of gained through racing through Europe through the, the, the heat of the summer there so it's pretty cool. Driving this car is, is very cool. It, it's not the most powerful car but it's pretty light. It's only about 700 kilos. It's got incredible balance so it does allow you to, to drift it and slide it around. Um, driving around the sites of Goodwood is pretty cool. I mean Goodwood itself is there's nowhere to go if you go off, so you've got to be reasonably careful. Oh, that's, a, that's some brave driving up there. Yeah, Tim Lazell being forced up onto the curb there by Harvey Stanley in the MGB. Feeling the history and, and the balance of the car is fantastic at such a beautiful track. This is the MGB power unit, which is an 1840cc engine with twin 45 Webers and a four-speed gearbox. Not as advanced as like the Lotus twin cam engines, but a good power unit combined with the weight of the car. In my sort of teens, we did 12 car rallies and things with my brother, road rallies, and then we went on to do a bit of hill climbing. But actually I haven't raced that much purely because the painting, I'm always turning up at race meetings in a transit van instead of, instead of a racing car. Only recently have I started racing again. It's really cool to get back out on track. I was fortunate enough to uh, know Henry Hope Frost. Henry had a really encyclopedic motorsport knowledge and uh, so we talked quite a lot on, uh, on Twitter. If I was looking for a photograph researching a painting, then he might come up with something that I couldn't find. And if we were at race meetings, he'd, he'd, he'd come over and have a chat and talk through the sort of latest work and things like that. And actually when I bought the car he was very excited about it, knowing it had a sort of Jerry Marshall Goodwood history and then uh, there ensued conversations about getting it back to the, uh, the Revival or the members meeting and uh, that led to racing at the Revival last year. The flag about to drop and the Ford Water Trophy is underway. Sadly, Henry never got to uh, watch it watch it race, but we do uh, we do proudly have a sticker on the car as a as a memory of him, and uh, yeah, we do I do think of him when um, when we arrive at the track and, and take it round. 
I do love wandering around the paddock, watching people work on the cars and take them apart, but it's, it's the motion and the sound and the smell which, which captivates me. And I think that's what a lot of people pick up about my paintings, that, is that I, can, I, I sort of translate that feeling of speed, but not just the actual speed, but the way the car moves around the circuit and the balance, so if it's oversteering or understeering, then I try and capture that in quite a subtle way. If you want to make a car looking like it's going really fast then you will flash the background past with as many sort of lines as you can um, but this style is really pared down that actually to try and translate speed into that is quite hard i'll move these lines around and and it and it will essentially suck your eye into here to the point where the car is sort of exploding out of the picture and that that kind of you feel it rushing towards you and that's what gives it gives it the energy